Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a ramp dragon build that I've pretty much thrown together. It's mainly focusing on the tilting at windmills package, although I'm not leaning extremely heavily on the on the Dreadseek or the Zeus's, I'm mainly leaning into the Sakwa Hill and Israfil package, along with the Bahamut Clear package and Conflag just to deal with Daria decks and anything else that may cause issues in those kind of board floody type decks. So with that being the main focus of the deck, we are taking in a single Basilisk Raider. Why Basilisk Raider? Because having an extra single Bane that is an extra body is really solid, especially if you don't have anything else to curve out on 4. And a single Star Phoenix, because Star Phoenix has infinite value when it comes to these spells, which we are running a couple of, so we can get some really nice value out of that. Otherwise, we're just kind of running, you know, two Blazings, two Swords, two Pure Hearted, of course the triple sippable package, all that sort of stuff. For draw power, ramp, and just general clearing of low cost followers. But mainly focusing on our top end, kind of past turn 5 is when we really want to swarm the board. Of course this doesn't always work out because sometimes you will just be running out of cards and having to try and top deck to victory, but for the most part it does a fairly solid job. So we'll get right into it and take a look. So our first matchup is Rune. Rune, surprising, surprising, no not really. Rune is still, I would say, one of the more common decks, but definitely not the most common deck. I've seen plenty of variety and I'm sure hopefully most of you guys, if you play enough, will see plenty of variety as well, otherwise you are just extremely unlucky. So Bahamut and Bahamut Israfil, really not a great starting hand, especially with Sybil. Really looking for something low cost, draw all our high end in our opener. Not a great time. Dragon Oracle though, coming into our hand on two. If you can't top deck it, don't even try. But we managed it, so it's fine. We see the Mysterio Knowledge drop, so we can pretty much say they're playing a diary deck. You don't see Mysterio Knowledge in dirt too much at all, and you don't have anything else that really wants to run it, so I think that's the most likely situation. That's just another card that you do see very commonly in Daria, so not too surprising at all. We did manage to get our ramp up far enough. Getting to the Draconic Fervors and beyond. Looking at some really solid turns. We have two more Draconics, so our draw power is crazy good. And the Blazing Breath is a really nice addition to clear something. Of course, Dragon Sword is going to be more ramp. So using that is going to be pretty good. We're actually going to be able to ramp to 10 super, super quickly. Only turn 5 and we've doubled our player point count. It's going to be pretty massive. Piercing Rune, of course, coming down, getting rid of that. Really a pain in the ass, honestly. Could definitely do some better trades. The Blade Mage, of course, pretty stock standard for these Daria decks. I mean, they're going to play them when they can to get damage. And getting 8 damage on me here is going to be pretty dangerous. Although we do have the Bahamut setups, which are just crazy. Being up to back-to-back -back Bahamut is going to really help our cause with clearing all of this stuff. So we do see a single ping going to my face. We do still have that Bahamut on board. And the Chimera, ugh. That's really going to be pushing it, especially with a Daria play. They're definitely going to aim for that clear, I feel. And if they don't, it's definitely not going to be a fun time for them. So we do see the Ogla, pretty much the perfect thing to evolve and trade into this Bahamut. Lucky for us, back-to-back -back Bahamut still with Daria exceptionally well. We also have the Conflags in the deck, so that alone would be able to deal with a lot of the big board floody turns, really limiting their options. We also still have our healing and draw power, along with a couple of nice other cards to really go along with though, especially the Israfil Blazing, works nicely to clear out bigger threats. Of course, they back-to-back -back Daria, so I think that is all three Darias at this point. Or maybe not, maybe that's two of the Darias. Either way, that's a lot of Daria to deal with. Lucky this Dragon deck techs really nicely against Daria and a top decking in Bahamut worked even better, although I could have easily cleared 90% of that. That extra Bahamut really just takes the cake. So the cons Consecration, not really doing much. Insight, again, drawing more. Really must be trying to dig. 
They do decide to burst me a little bit. But that's not really of much concern. I mean, we get 9 damage there and we have a chance to play our Draconic Fervors for healing. Along with just throw a Dragon Oracle for some more draw power. Along with the Pure Hearted. Just trying to gain that extra draw power that we might need to push through the end of the game. We have got the Double Eyes, which are great. Along with the Israfil, which is another little bit of heal. And because we've already taken out both Darius and a good amount of their board flood, they're really going to have not too many cards left in their deck that are going to be solid options for dealing with big threats. So we do see another Daria, so that's number three for sure. All we have to do is take care of that one, and they're really going to be out of resources at that point. Which, when you've got Blazing Breath, and, you know, just in general, really good removal, it's not hard at all to get rid of this stuff. So focus this whole turn on removal, because from here they really don't have much support left. Gives us a good option to throw down an eyes for our next turn. And the conflag draw, meaning anything that is left over is going to be easily clearable. Stuff like this golem assault where they're getting three golems basically is going to end them right here. We play our eyes, most likely we're going to see a triple golem play for wards, which could now. very easily be countered by our conflag. So we go for the 8 damage with the Evolve, no point really holding on to it. And we see the Insight into Conjure Golem. As expected, Triple Conjure Golem are the most likely play they're going to go for, trying to stall me out enough that they can get damage in. Especially since they did have a Chimera. Lucky for me, the Conflag will clear everything here and allow us to actually go for game. This Blade Mage, though, could have really screwed me over in the short term. If they had have hit the eyes, the Conflag would have killed my own dragon. Fortunately for me, that didn't happen. But either way, I could have easily played Israfil or Eyes next turn to either heal or just go for lethal. So, not really a big issue at all. Next up, we have Forest. Forest is an interesting matchup at that, I think. Since we are teched against board clear, like, sorry, teching four board clears, we can quite easily remove a lot of Forest's early game stuff, especially with Salamander because they are a lot lower, meaning Salamander, Israfil, Conflag, of course, Bahamut all have extremely good pressure against Forest. The only issue with Forest now is the fact that most of them are BNB kind of variants, and a lot of those do run some transform effects, so it can be difficult to get over some of their uh, some of their smaller stuff when they're transforming your bigger stuff. Of course we do see Wood of Brambles. Very, very common card. I mean it's not really much threat to me right now because really we're not pushing anything too big out. Or too small, really. We're just looking for draw power. We're looking to ramp up, get all our early game going, and not really suffer in that early game. So we are going to get the pretty nice Draconic Fervor on 5. I think that's always important. Being able to pull that off on 5 consistently really makes a big difference to your overall progression when you're going through the deck. I mean, to draw, heal, and ramp all in a single card on turn 5 is really a reasonable option. So we don't see much from the forest player. Really, they just do kind of really normal things. At least for us, you know, Breath of the Salamander, especially now that we have both, uh, sorry, all three copies, very, very easy to use and just remove anything they play. Wide boards aren't going to be an issue for this deck at all, especially with Double Bahamut and Israfil as well, along with the Suck with Israfil combo, which could work out quite nicely. So we do see the Suck Hill get to drop. I do throw a Bahamut with it this time, just because I don't want to give away that I have Israfil. In this forest matchup, I'd rather show them that I have a Bahamut than show them that I have an Israfil, mainly because Israfil is going to be much better to surprise them with healing, or just to surprise the board clear a lot easier than a Bahamut would. Especially since it will also deal damage to face, whereas Bahamut won't, so showing them that I have a Bahamut in my hand is a lot better than showing them I have an Israfil, especially when throwing a Suck Hill to the board usually comes along with Israfil, so now they'll probably assume that I don't have Israfil in hand. They do play the Cassiopeia. 
really solid card that I wish I could play it more. It would be a great thing to test out. Cassiopeia is basically Will of the Forest extended, so it's really cool. We do end up playing our Israfil anyway, mainly because I just want to really deal with this, and I'm not expecting to be transformed again, especially since the damage can actually set up lethal for next turn if they don't get rid of this. Although they do have another Crystal Lily, I believe that is the second one, so it's absolutely crazy that they had so many of those. I do decide to throw the Eyes Draha straight to the board, going for that damage really nicely. I mean, getting 8, always perfect. We also means we drop our other Eyes down to 8, meaning it can actually combo with Breath of the Salamander now for a really nice damage to face clearing effect. So we do see Elf Queen. Elf Queen healing them. Real nightmare to deal with. At least it wasn't to full health, which saves us a little bit of hassle. But it does trade extremely effectively. Fortunately for us, we still have the advantage of going into another Eyes Draha, and they did play another Crystal Lily, which seems really an odd thing to drop when you know I'm running such large, large followers. To drop another one just seems really out of place. So we do get to put a lot of pressure onto them. Clearing off their board, having 7 damage. Cassiopeia again, going to be a nightmare to deal with. It is going to deal enough damage to set up at least a clear. And we're pretty much forced into some much smaller plays with Bahamut, Dragoon Cyphers, Breaths. Just kind of stall the game a little bit. Don't really have much more of an option here. So we get to pretty much just pass our turn. I do decide to leave the 3-3 up. I want to keep my breath in case they go wider. And of course Jungle Warden, eh, not really a big problem, I mean. They're going to use, yeah, one to clear, one for damage, and we wipe both of them with Bahamut. It's just really dragging out the game at this point, is really all that they're good for. So this Bahamut again sets up lethal, basically all we can do is keep replaying until we have enough. King Elephant though, getting its drop off, really quite an annoying card. It does get traded though instead of going face, obviously fearing that I could go for lethal, don't really want to do that. So we do get tilting, perfect setup for the next Bahamut, I mean as long as they can't deal with this tilting at windmills, I can pretty easily throw Bahamut to the board and throw it to their face. I mean nothing can really stand in the way of Bahamut, it's going to clear every single ward that they could possibly play. And luckily, even with that heal, it's still within range of Bahamut's 9 damage. So it worked out way more than effective. So that game was a bit drawn out, but ended basically how you'd want it to. Windmill Dragon, pretty good. So even in our current meta, this kind of ramp dragon still has a fair bit of power. Of course, you could definitely still focus on more of a queen combo deck, but I do feel that I don't want to rely on that too much, and I would probably run an extra Eyes Draha over Zeus personally, but I do only have two eyes, which is why I think one Zeus is appropriate, especially since Zeus can also act as a nice ward to really draw out a game if you do need it. So other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, you will find the deck list in the description below. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.